I, like, where am I right now? I have, this is where I am. Let, let look at this. Today I'm going to be taking you on a game hunting adventure that I went on recently to Ottawa, which is the capital city of Canada in the province of Ontario. And I was there for about a week with my wife who was there for work, but I was set loose on the city and I made sure to set aside two days just strictly for game hunting at game stores, pawn shops, and thrift stores. So let's hop on a plane and head there right now. After about a two hour flight, we have finally arrived in the capital city of Canada, Ottawa, Ontario. And uh, man, if you've never been to this city, Ottawa has that great small town vibe with a big city package. They've got great restaurants and uh, it's home of the Parliament Building along with the Rideau Canal. It's a really beautiful place to check out and uh, we're going to soak in the city a little bit on our first night there before we tuck into our hotel and get ready for day one of game hunting. It is finally the start of day one of game hunting in Ottawa and I've sat myself down with a cup of coffee and some breakfast and one thing that I like to do whether I'm visiting a new city or just going out yard sailing on a Saturday morning is open up Google Maps and drop some pins for all the locations that I like to visit that way I can kind of make an efficient route to see them all. One thing that I noticed though when I was doing this for Ottawa is just how far apart things are spread. Without a car, it probably would have taken me 45 minutes to get to my farthest location, but luckily today my brother's friend has lent us his vehicle, so we're going to tour around and hit a couple of game stores and some thrift stores. First up is a game store called Game Zetera. You know, my brother sent me photos of this place last year, and I've been wanting to check it out ever since. I've got over 2,000 games in my collection, so it's a pretty cool feeling when you walk into a game store and you can be overwhelmed by just the sheer volume of games they've got. This is absolutely one of those places. The thing about shops like this is that they generally price their games right around eBay prices and in some cases they're priced even a little higher. So it's always a good idea to go in with a plan of attack and lately I've been trying to collect for the N64 and Wii U. So today I'm going to be looking for games on those consoles to see if I can get a little bit closer to completing those sets. There weren't many N64 games at this shop that I didn't already have or wasn't willing to pay for, but one Wii U game title that I picked up was Rabbids Land. Rabbids Land. Rabbids Land. Rabbid Land. <laughs> I picked up Rabbids Land. You know, it's not uncommon to find games that are priced separately from each other at shops like this. Usually what will happen is a game comes in, it rises slightly in value and then a second copy comes in but instead of adjusting the original price they just price them separately and leave them that way. A big score for me, I got a complete copy for $10 and was really happy with that. Another game that I picked up on the Wii U was Ben 10 Omniverse and uh, this one's a complete copy as well. Great condition and so for $20 I left with a couple of games that I don't already have on the Wii U. Great score. A little rain's not gonna slow down our thrifting adventures and you know I've always been really jealous of people who live in big cities because they just assume that their thrift stores are gonna have way more inventory in them and the scores are gonna be that much more abundant. My strategy for thrift stores is pretty much always the same. I prioritize the glass case first looking for higher value games before going to the regular game section to look for whatever they might have there. Sometimes I find PS1 and Dreamcast games buried in the CDs or game strategy guides buried in the books. Then I take a look through clothing just to see what they've got and I make sure to hit the wire wall for loose cables, chargers, and controllers. You know, even though I came away empty handed from that thrift store, I really wanted to leave the footage in there just to prove a point. It doesn't matter what city you live in, thrift stores are all about the grind. You've got to visit them pretty much every day, pop your head in and see what sort of inventory has shown up in that store if you want to get the scores. 
on to the next one. On the way to our next stop, we come across a Salvation Army that actually wasn't on our list of places to hit, but we absolutely are going to pop our heads in to see what we can find since we're already out here. And after a little bit of digging, I come across this copy of Guitar Hero Aerosmith on the PS2. Guitar Hero initially launched in November of 2005 on the PlayStation 2 exclusively, and I wouldn't discover it for another year when I picked up Guitar Hero 2, and it quickly became easily one of my favorite games of all time. Since its initial release, Guitar Hero has pretty much been launched on every single console you can think of, including the Nintendo Wii. And ever since then, I've been a little bit conflicted on how I should collect my Guitar Hero games. I've kind of split my efforts between the Wii and the PS2, but the one that I'm most nostalgic for is absolutely the PS2, which has led me to collect more games, like this Aerosmith one that I picked up today. Our last stop of today's game hunt is at the final Valley Village in this part of Ottawa. And I've got really high hopes because there's a couple that I didn't even show in this video that, oof, they didn't pan out. So my first stop to the glass case pretty much paid off right away as I picked up a couple of great games right off the bat. The first game I find is Sonic 3 and uh, this one's missing the manual. They wanted $40 for it, which wasn't too bad of a deal, but I was extra excited to find it as I own copies already of 1 and 2, and it was missing the third game, so this completes the family for me. The other game that catches my eye out of the glass case is this copy of Sid Meier's Civilization on the Super Nintendo. You know, I've got a really soft spot in my heart for the Civilization series, I've always loved these games. But it's also a really interesting game as well, because it's one of the few on the short list of games that are compatible with the Super Nintendo mouse. So if you're interested in games that play on the mouse instead of using the classic controller, you should absolutely look up the list of games that works with that peripheral. Very cool. That's a wrap for part one of game hunting in Ottawa. If you like this kind of content, a subscribe would mean a lot, so please consider doing that. And if you need something to tie you over between now and part two, I will link my video of game hunting in Fredericton, New Brunswick, right here for you to check out. And uh, stay tuned. Part two of Game Hunting in Ottawa is coming soon. If I didn't have a map to follow, I would have no idea where I'm going. <laughs>